Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how a relay operates. Over here, I have a relay. I've removed the cover of the relay so we can see inside. On the left hand side, there are many, many windings that go around a metallic rod. When current flows through the windings, it builds up an electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field creates a magnetic field on this rod. There's a rod that travels in the inside and at the bottom, there's a platform. When we energize the relay, a magnetic field is created and what it does is it attracts that platform to the rod. Over here I have a DC bench supply and it's been set to about 24 volts. The output of the bench supply is now connected to the relay. So that means I have about 24 volts between this crocodile lead and this crocodile lead. Notice that when I put the crocodile lead on the other terminal of the relay, the relay will energize. The reason why I've chosen 24 volts is this is a 24 volt relay. Some relays require only 12 volts while other relays require an AC voltage. For example, this relay requires a 220 volt input in order to activate the relay. Now this relay operates at 24 volts. So when I attach the lead here, you can see how that electromagnet is activating and therefore magnetizing the coil, creating a magnetic field and attracting the platform to that rod. The principle of this electromagnetism is easily explained. If I take a nail, this is just a wire nail, and I now take a long piece of wire and just wound it round this nail. And if I connect the power supply directly to this nail like I had with the relay, right, I've built an elementary electromagnet and notice that the electromagnet is not functional at the moment because the supply is not connected. When I connect the supply, current is now flowing in the coil, building up a magnetic field, creating a magnetic attraction between that point and that point, and watch me lift up the screwdriver. Now when I disconnect the supply, watch how it loses its magnetic attraction. And you can see there, there's no magnetic force. But when I connect the supply, right, so you can see that I can lift the screwdriver because the current is now flowing, and when I disconnect the supply, it loses its magnetic attraction. Now in terms of the relay, the coil attracts a platform, but that platform is galvanically isolated, but linked to this conductor, which moves. It's like a leaf spring, and as you can see, it can move. To maintain the galvanic isolation, you can see they've used a piece of wood between the contact and the relay, the coil side, and that's what maintains that galvanic isolation. On other relays, they use plastic pieces, anything that does not conduct electricity. So that piece of wood transfers the magnetic force onto the contact. It can short out terminals, so it can make a short circuit there, or it can open a circuit, right? If you look on the top, these two contacts are touching each other, a short circuit, but when I move this contact to the other side, you can see that I'm actually opening a circuit. So I'm opening this circuit and shorting out that circuit. This is called a single pole double throw relay. Some relays only act as a switch. For example, if you have a look at this relay, we can see there are only two contacts here, one and two. So it's an open circuit, but when the relay activates, it becomes a closed circuit between those two contacts. Now this relay has three sets of contacts. This one over here is already touching this one over here. So this is what we call a normally closed contact. And over here, these are the normally open contacts. So what happens is when the relay activates, it moves this contact to the other side. So as I energize the relay, you can see how that magnetic force is translated to a pushing function, which pushes that leaf spring from the one contact to the other contact. This acts as a magnetically controlled switch. If I connect the supply and keep it connected, you can see that the relay stays in that state. If I remove the supply, you can see that the relay is now at rest. So the purpose of the relay is to use one circuit to control another circuit and the relay works using an electromagnetic force. Now over here I have a multimeter and it's got these leads. I'm going to set it to continuity. That means that if I measure across the leads, it's a short circuit, the meter makes that buzzing sound and you can see it says zero here. When I disconnect the leads, you can see it's an open circuit. So if I take my leads and I connect them to my relay, the meter is showing a short circuit because these two contacts are closed. 
and when I force the contact away from the other one, you can see the meter is showing an open circuit. So you can see that the relay allows me to open and close a circuit. On, in this case, these are the normally closed contacts, and if I move it to the normally open, now the meter is saying it's an open circuit, and if I move the contactor to the other side, you can see it is now a short circuit. Open circuit, short circuit. So what we're doing is we're using one circuit, a circuit here connected just to the windings of this relay to control another circuit. So the windings of the relay have nothing to do with the contacts over here. Yes, the magnetic effect of the windings will move this contactor there there to there, but the current flowing in these windings has nothing to do with the current that is flowing in these contacts over here. So we call this galvanic isolation, which means even though I'm going to activate the relay by connecting the supply, the current that is flowing in this part of the relay has nothing to do with the current flowing here. And if we have a look at the underside, you can see that the current coming in here to activate the coil is isolated from these contactors over here. So I could connect my own supply to this side. I could have a siren, a speaker, anything on this side, which is totally separate from this side. Now there are many different types of relays. For example, you have the single pole, single throw relay, which just acts as an open or closed switch. So when the relay activates, it closes the switch. When the relay is de-energized, it opens the switch, and that is all. This relay which I was showing you has three contacts. You can see that when the relay is at rest, two contacts are closed and when we energize the relay, this link moves and these two contacts would be closed. Now over here we can see we've got even more contacts and over here we've got many contacts. So there are many different types of relays with different poles. For example, over here I've got a relay with the coil wires over here, but look at the contactor wires. We've got four, eight, 12 terminals. So this is a quad pole, quad throw relay. But the principle of operation is the same. If I energize the coil over here with a supply, the contactors will shift. So while relays come in all sorts of sizes and packages, the principle of operation remains the same. Right, just a quick practical demonstration of how a relay works. I have a 230 volt light here. There's the globe, it is connected to a relay, and the other side is connected to a plug. This plug will be plugged into the mains, and I will be getting a 230 volts across these terminals here. I have a relay over here. The relay will be connected to this little battery. This little battery is only a 12 volt DC battery, while on the other side of the relay, this is the AC circuit, and that will be allowing AC current to flow and activate and power up my light. I'm going to connect a multimeter here to show you the voltage. Right, I've connected a multimeter. There's my light, there's my neutral. It's currently unplugged, so I'm getting zero volts. Now, when doing these type of circuits, please use Vero board or a circuit board or even a training board such as a breadboard like this. But in this video, I'm just showing it to you on the desk so that you can see the wires. You can actually see what connected where, but this is not a safe way of doing it. So I'm connecting a meter. I've got my meter here and I'm going to plug in the supply now and you'll see the meter is showing 230 volts. Right, my light is currently off and watch what happens when I connect my 12 volt little battery to my relay terminals. So as I energize the coil, the relay operates and there I'm using a DC circuit to control an AC circuit. There you can see this is my DC 12 volt little battery here, but I'm controlling a 228 volt AC circuit. The DC circuit, as I said on this side, has nothing to do with the AC circuit. The AC circuit has nothing to do with the DC circuit. They are isolated from each other. This is a controlled electromechanical switch. Thanks for watching and cheers.